So today we're going to be reviewing and doing an all day wear test on the brand new Dior Forever Skin Perfect Stick Foundation. Now this just recently launched and I couldn't wait to test it out on our mature skin. So in case you're interested, then keep on watching. Hey guys, it's Kat and welcome to my channel. You guys, there's been a trickling of new foundations coming out and I am so excited for it because I love testing out foundations and skin tints for our mature skin. And when Dior released the stick foundation, I was kind of like, hmm, do I really need it? Hmm. Probably not, but when Dior released their stick foundation that is multi-use, it kind of got me excited because I love using products that are multi-purpose. And at the tune of $52, I expect it to be pretty good. So without further ado, let's get into the video. And in case you're wondering what happened to my hair, if it's looking a little peachy, I went ahead and got my hair done. And I wanted something a little bit different, a little bit more warm tone since we're heading into fall. I can't believe August is almost over with and I just wanted to try something a little different. What it's called is like a peach rose gold. What do you think? I think it's pretty, I think it's different. But anyway, I took the liberty of already applying my primers. I just went in with my usual, the, the L'Oreal Prime Lab 24 Hour Pore Minimizer. You know, it's one of my all time go-to primers. And then of course I went under the eye area with the e.l.f. Stay Cool Primer Stick. And here we are. I really am excited about testing out this foundation stick. Typically, I don't like foundation sticks. They come off as waxy and like a crayon and they're just not easy to manipulate. I remember, I think I tested out, this was years ago, the Wet n Wild foundation stick. Oh, it turned me off to all foundation sticks and it just left a bad taste in my mouth. It smelled bad, it looked bad, it was cakey, but thank goodness, even within the last five years, foundation sticks have come leaps and bounds. One that I can think of is the Ilia Skin Rewind Complexion Stick. This is beautiful. It's beautiful on mature skin. It provides light to medium coverage. I used it quite a bit. And just recently, Charlotte Tilbury released the Unreal Skin Sheer Glow Tint in a foundation stick. I know a lot of people don't like this because it seems awfully shimmery. I reviewed it and I actually quite like it. I think it's beautiful. It's very hydrating, but does have a little bit of glow to it, a little bit of a sheen but let's talk about the new Dior Forever Skin Perfect Multi-Use Stick Foundation. Like I said, it does retail for $52 and it comes in 18 shades, which I find is super disappointing. You should have more shades than that because this is a stick foundation. So at least have 25, 30, we're not asking for much. I do love the Forever Skin Glow Foundation from Dior. I'm in the shade 1.5 Warm. Again, I had to go online and see which color would suit my complexion. I went with 2N, which is neutral with neutral undertones. Neutral, neutral undertones, but anyway, okay. It's supposed to be multi-use. You can use it as a foundation as well as a concealer. And I imagine if you had a really dark shade, you can use it for contouring. It's supposed to blur and correct. Well, it's supposed to blur. You're supposed to have a nice natural blurred finish. It's supposed to provide 24 hour wear and hydration. It's supposed to be heat and humidity resistant. Now living in the deep south, it is August, it is hot, it's still going to be humid. Those words, heat, humidity resistant, made my ears mmm. But you know, I've been testing this product out all week and that's the only way I can give you a thorough review and try it out with different primers and different types of products on it to see if it's really worth that hefty price tag. So this is what she looks like. I'm gonna swatch it on the back of my hand. And I do have to say, it has a very strong floral scent. And if you don't like a floral scent, this is not gonna be your cup of tea. I don't know why they have to put perfumes in foundation. It's just, to me, not a good idea. And it actually blends out beautifully, in my opinion. It's not too creamy or balmy, but it also has a nice, and I don't wanna use this word thick, but more of a stable consistency. So let's go ahead and apply it. And I'm gonna apply it right to the center of my face. And it says one swipe, it's supposed to blur. And I'm gonna be super generous with this foundation. I'm gonna take the heat of my fingers and just kinda blend it out. I wanna cover up that redness. This is really blending out beautifully, quite smoothly for a stick foundation. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and take my trusty Sigma Kabuki brush and just stipple it in. It does give really nice coverage. So if you're looking for something for a little bit more coverage, you may like this. It feels really light on the skin. I do have to say that. Most stick foundations, in my opinion, feel kind of waxy and heavy, but this is really pretty right off the bat. And this is with just three or four swipes. I'm gonna go ahead and bump my lights down to 20% so we can see what type of coverage we're getting. I mean, this is pretty good. This is pretty good coverage because you can hardly see my hyperpigmentation. It's still there, it's still peeking through, but it really just glided on the skin. As far as blurring is concerned, I don't know. I could be getting a little bit of help from the L'Oreal Pore Minimizer Primer, but let's go ahead and apply it to the left side of my face. And again, I'm just going one, two, three, blending it. I really think this is a matte finish. It's not glowy whatsoever. So if that's what you're looking for in this foundation, you're not gonna get it. This is definitely a matte finish. Got a lot of age marks and discoloration right through here. It doesn't cover it up necessarily, it, it kind of fades it, if that makes any sense. Makes it less pronounced. Whatever's left on the brush, I just brush it onto my forehead because I do have a tiny forehead and I find that works perfectly as opposed to just, you know, drawing it onto your forehead. I have to admit, this is very pretty. Is it my usual foundation that I love, which is like light to medium coverage with like a slightly dewy or satin finish. This is definitely a matte finish. It looks flat on my face. It looks one dimensional, two dimensional. It's nice though. I know that sounds weird, but I'm gonna go ahead and just add a tiny bit more right to my most porous areas. And again, just taking the heat of my fingertips and tapping it in. Oh, the scent. And then taking a little bit because it is supposed to be multi-purpose and adding it where I tend to get red, which is right under my nose area. For those concentrated areas in the middle of the face, I'm gonna go in with a super tight brush. And this is a really old IT Cosmetics brush that I have where I'm just gonna stipple it in right through there. So we can get a seamless look. I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of concealer. And of course I'm using the Slip Tint Concealer from Say. When I test out foundation products, I like to use my trusted complexion products so I know it's not the concealer or it's not the primer because those are so well tested and so well loved. I instantly know if there's a problem with the foundation that I'm testing out, it's gotta be the foundation and not the concealer because I have been using this concealer consistently for the last several months and it's just one of my all time favorites. It just does exactly what I want. It doesn't settle into fine lines and it offers that beautiful light to medium coverage. So we're just tapping in the concealer, making sure everything is seamless with the stick foundation. Now that I have the concealer and foundation on, what do you think? I think it looks really seamless right through here even though we added a little bit of extra swipes of the Dior Skin Perfect Stick Foundation right through here, it's not caking up at all. I think it looks smooth, but I did a lot of blending, a lot of stippling with my brush. It's all in how you apply it. Stick foundations, like I said, can tend to get very waxy, very cakey, super fast. But in this case, this formula is quite smooth. So that's why I'm kind of impressed with it so far. Let's go ahead and bump up the lights and apply the rest of the makeup. Wow, I look super pale. It's time to put some more color back into my complexion. And today I'm gonna go in with a cream bronzer because this is a matte finish. I wanna add a little bit of juiciness back into the skin. I'm just gonna go in with my favorite Catrice Melted Sun Cream Bronzer in Beach Babe. And I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly apply that. Bronzer's on, looking good. We're adding a little bit more dimension back into the complexion, a little more warmth. For blush today, I'm going in with the RMS Beauty Redimension Hydra Powder Blush in the shade Pomegranate 
Fizz. You guys, I've forgotten how gorgeous this particular shade is. Celebrating my peach rose gold hair, I figure why not, right? This is a beautiful formula. It's very hydrating. Even though it's powder blush, it's not gonna show any additional texture on mature skin. It also has a slight little sheen to it that kind of bounces the light and the pigment is just absolutely beautiful. It's very summery, very peachy. And let's go ahead and apply. Isn't that a beautiful blush? This is in the shade Pomegranate Fizz, and I love how rosy, peachy it looks. I think it looks really nice with the bronzer. It just creates a beautiful sun-kissed look. Very pretty, so now that I have the majority of my complexion products on, I'm gonna do a quick eyeshadow look and a quick lip, and then we're gonna see how this foundation really holds up to my 57-year-old skin. So everything was going so swimmingly until I applied my liquid eyeliner. The eyeliner gods are clearly not with me today. <laughs> Eyes are done. I just did a really simple eyeshadow look with the Viseart Paris Love Letter Eyeshadow Palette. You can get this at Sephora. It's got a lot of warm peachy tones, a fabulous little green, that's beautiful, a lavender, and just beautiful shades, a nice deep chocolate brown. But I just wanted to do a simple look. I'm gonna go ahead and set my under eye. I'm just gonna go in with the Tarte Creaseless loose powder. You know, I've been enjoying this, especially during the summertime. I'm in the shade yellow. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of that and set my concealer. This is super blurring as well. And this has been a staple for me this summer. And right, right through there. Everything is looking good so far. And for lips today, I'm gonna go out of my comfort zone. I don't wear red anymore. And I think today, cause I'm going to meet a really good friend of mine that I haven't seen in a few months. We're going out for sushi. I thought it'd be fun to just do like a bright, fun red lip. I have some red in my top and I thought it would go really well. And today I'm gonna go in with the Velvet Matte Lip Pencil from NARS in the shade Dragon Girl. It's been a minute since I've worn red lipstick. So let's see how this looks. And here we are with the final look. Wow, this is a strong, bold red lip. I haven't rocked a red lip in quite some time, but I have to admit, this velvet lip crayon from NARS is absolutely smooth, creamy, glided right on. It doesn't feel dry or it didn't pull on my lips, but we'll see how long that lasts. But the true star of the show today is definitely the Dior Forever Skin Perfect Stick Foundation. It looks like I put on a lot, I know, but it feels super lightweight and it doesn't feel cakey. It really blended in super easily, uh, easy to build, but this is what we're looking at. 
it really is a pretty foundation, but is it hydrating? Now for reference, I do have normal to dry skin and I tend to get a little oily towards the end of the day, especially if I spend a lot of time outdoors in the summertime, but I tend to get oily in my T-zone and right through here. So this will be a good day to test out the stick foundation to see if it's gonna hold up to the humidity. It's gonna be a gorgeous day. I can't wait to go out in natural daylight to see exactly how this looks. And yeah, we'll see by the end of the video how it lasts, how it performs. Does it really live up to the claims of heat and humidity resistant? So let's go out in natural daylight to see exactly how natural this looks. This is what it looks like in natural daylight. Cicadas. It looks like makeup. I get it. I know. It looks like a true foundation that has medium coverage, but it's so lightweight. It's so pretty. And even in natural daylight, I see how it's kind of blurring. It looks good. I really like it so far. And it's only been an hour. I've got some errands to run today. I can't wait to meet my friend for sushi. I've been craving sushi so bad. But yeah, this is what it looks like in natural daylight. So far, I'm liking it a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. This is promising. Okay, it is 5.18. It's been over six hours since I first applied the stick foundation from Dior and I came back from lunch. Mm -hmm. It was, hi Faye, it was really good. The sushi was fantastic, but even better was seeing my really dear friend. And I'm in my office, it's a different angle, and I'm trying to get some of the natural daylight in here and show you exactly what we're dealing with after six hours. And I have to tell you, it's one of those foundations where it doesn't look like banging out of the box. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't look great upon first application. It's pretty. But the magic is, is that it gets better and improves throughout the day. Now, I haven't done any touch-ups. My lipstick did wear off, and let's face it, I'm not a lipstick girl. I love a good gloss, and I think I just threw on uh, the Clarins Lip Comfort Oil, but this is what it looks like, and the complexion is still going strong. It hasn't worn off. My natural oils are peeking in through here, so it's kind of dewy, but not greasy. Let's get in there and get up in those pores and see how blurring they are. And I know this isn't the best lighting, but I want you to see it in all types of lighting, natural, sunlight, bad lighting. But yeah, you can really see the peach in my hair now. Oof. So I will check back with you in a few. And we're back. It's been over nine hours since I first applied the Dior Forever Skin Perfect Stick Foundation, multi-use at that. And I really want you to see up close and personal how it's really settled into my complexion, how it's mixed with my natural oils. Like I said, this is one of those foundations that curiously improves by the course of the day. Now, I did notice, since it has been over nine hours, my blush did wear off a bit. I might have rubbed my face or something. So let's go ahead and turn down the lights to 20% and see exactly how this is looking. As you can see, my natural oils are peeking through, and I'm not mad at it. When they said it was heat and humidity resistant, it absolutely is true. I live in the South and it got very hot, very humid. I stood outside waiting for a while outside the restaurant to wait on my friend. And it, yeah, I was in direct sunlight and this is what we have. It's looking a little glossy, but remember we did finish it off with a tad of the Tarte Creaseless Powder, which I absolutely love. But for, for nine over nine hours, this is really looking good without any touch-ups. Yeah, let's take a look. I really like this stick foundation and I'm ready to give you my final thoughts. Now remember, it does retail for $52. It comes in 18 shades. It's supposed to be multi-purpose and it's supposed to be 24 hour wear and also hydrating. It's supposed to provide a matte medium finish. I would say yes, definitely matte. So if your complexion runs on the oilier side, you may really like this foundation. Is it easy to blend? Absolutely. I'm not a huge fan of a stick foundation. However, this one is pretty good. I have to give it to Dior. I like it. I really do. Would I recommend it? 
Mm. If you want something that has medium coverage that you tend to run on the oilier side, and I'm not saying that this isn't good for normal to dry skin, I think it is. It's definitely a matte medium finish, that's for sure. Would I reach for this? You know what, I'm going to. I'm gonna continue wearing this when I want a little bit more coverage throughout the day. But if you're old school like me and you love a traditional liquid foundation, you probably would not like this because stick foundations, to me, are like an acquired taste, like boba tea. I don't get it, with the little jelly things in there? But yeah, those are my thoughts on the Dior Skin Perfect Stick Foundation. What do you think, guys? Are you thinking about picking it up? Let me know down in the comments if you've tried it. Are you thinking about try it? Or are you saying, no way, Jose? Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I had so much fun. I hope you did too. And if you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing. I would love it if you'd be a part of our family. But for now, mwah. mahalo kita. I love you. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye. Wait, you're still here? Okay, bye.